My name is Josh Miller. I own Riverstone Kennels, and I've been training gun dogs for more than 16 years. I have field trialed, I've hunt tested, but at the end of the day, I'm a duck hunter. You might find that the duck in our Duck Dogs podcast is spelt uniquely. The UK stands for my British labs. I love my British labs. I love what they offer me, both as a part of my family and the high motor in the field. As you're going to find, I have some pretty special dogs. Follow along in our podcast series here as we talk about both in the field hunting and in the field training situations that will hopefully help you progress with your dog at home. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Duck Dogs. I'm your host, Josh Miller, and uh, let's thank our partners before we get rolling here. So uh, first and foremost, thank you to our presenting sponsor, which is Yukonuba, Yukonuba Premium Performance Sport 3020. It's the blend of food that I feed my personal dogs and the food that keeps our dogs going strong during the season, www.yukonuba.com. Thank you to Gundog Supply. Gundog Supply is your one-stop shop for all of your hunting and training needs. And so as we head into the season, make sure that you stock up on everything you need for your four-legged hunting partner, www.gundogsupply.com. Thank you to Sitka Gear. Sitka Gear is your premium option for clothing in the field. Both that first off, that Optifade pattern is just fantastic, but everything that they have from you know their pants to their layering system to their outer shells to their wind stopper, everything is just fantastic and it keeps us in the field longer and comfortable for longer. So go check them out www.sitkagear.com. Thank you to Lucky Duck. Lucky Duck is your five-star crash test rated kennel both in the intermediate and in the large size. So no matter what size your dog is, you will be sure that your dog is traveling the safest way that they possibly can. So go check them out and all the accessories that they have for that kennel at www.luckyduck.com. Thank you to Kent Cartridge. Kent Cartridge is your best and premium option for any shotgun shells, either either in the upland field, in the waterfall field, or if you're needing blanks for training, go check them out at Kent Cartridge. And last but not least, thank you to Retriever Roadmap. Retriever Roadmap is your online option for training your gun dog at home. So no matter what your goal is, you can rest assured that Retriever Roadmap will help you get there with video, uh, video video-based library that will walk you through step-by-step. So go check them out, www.retrieverroadmap.com. All right, you guys. So, uh, NODAC, North Dakota, day three. Day three was was interesting to say the least. So, um, I want to thank Kyle again for coming on here late, late last night uh, with me to kind of recap what day two was all about. And uh, today I'm back with uh, my boy Brett, and uh, we're gonna kind of go over what day three was like. What a mess! Oh my gosh, <laughs> there was there's no other way to describe today. It was, it was a mess. Um, not from start to finish, but almost. Right, it started out great. Well, it started out not so great. Mm-hmm. Then it went to great, and then it went back to not so great. Yeah, yeah. It uh, it was a roller coaster uh, of the day. And you know, the reality is, is that when you're on the road, these things are just going to happen. A hundred percent. Right. I mean, you know, you're putting the your equipment to the test yourself to the test i mean you're pushing the envelope in so many ways like something's going to give at some point it's just that it seemed like everything gave at once today (laughs) so (laughs) um so so um before we get into today anything you kind of want to you know recap and go over uh you know it's always a fun trip love coming out here hanging out with all the people that we've been here with uh, Whitney and Kelly had, uh, you know, today was their last day, so they headed back uh, east to home. Uh, had a really good shoot this morning. Lots of birds around, but honestly, the biggest surprise to me has been patterning. Mm. Like the the ducks and the geese both. Like we'll find fields, and then the next day, it's they're a totally different. You know, maybe not as many birds are in the field, or it just 
you know, birds have left that field and went somewhere else. So mm-hmm. the patterning of the birds have been really tough on the scouting sense, you know, side of things. So obviously it makes for a crapshoot when we set up in the morning going, okay, hey, they were here last night, and we don't see half the birds that show up that were actually in the field. So right. that's <clears throat> that's been my biggest takeaway so far. So Yeah, I, I totally agree. So I talked to a friend of mine as we were pulling in tonight, and he is hunting probably, you know, a couple hours south of here. And so he was just kind of checking in to see how we were doing. I was checking in to see how he was doing. And, uh, I mean, that was my biggest takeaway from here, too, is that it has been so frustrating from a scouting standpoint mm-hmm. is you think you're on the X. You spend a lot of time and fuel and everything else getting permission, getting on the X, getting there early, setting up, getting there. And then a fraction of the birds show up. Yep. And that has been very consistent yep. on this trip. 100%. And, uh and we're going to get into that probably in your scouting session <laughs> here uh, this afternoon because it's a concern that we have for tomorrow because yep. it's been a common theme here. Yep. Um, but no different than so yesterday, uh, last night, of course, you weren't on you know, the episode with Kyle, but we had talked about how there was the field that you and I found that had over a 1,000 birds in it, and then the next day had maybe half of that, and then the next day had maybe half of that. And it was like every day just dwindled down yep. you know so um now i would say that isn't crazy abnormal right because like if you run out of food or something sure. changes right and we did have a front which we were like maybe something's here but it has been consistent every day that we find birds we feel like we have the x we get on it and sometimes we can actually two different hunts We've seen the field that they've all jumped to. Right. For no reason. Yep. Right? Like like off the roost, instead of coming east, they're going west. Mm-hmm. And, and it's super frustrating. Very frustrating. Yeah, and the weather, it, I don't know if it's been mentioned, but, you know, we were at 76 degrees, I think, on the first day we were here. And then that front moved through, and it was 20, 24 degrees or whatever this morning 21 on my truck yeah so i mean it was a it was a big change but yeah it's just it's super weird because watching you and i went and sat on a roost uh last night and birds went north they went south they went west and totally different directions that they had gone you know the night before so it's just super weird i guess it wasn't last night it was the night before Mm -hmm. because last night was the night when augie had his first win that's right. So yeah, that's, that's right. which was super cool. I know I, it was it was just fun to capture. It was fun to watch. Cheers to Kyle. Cheers to you for all the hard work that you put in the Augie. It just it was super awesome to be a part of. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, it just it's been a little. There's definitely a lot of birds around. You know, you and I had found that duck roost that had that I don't know it. how many on it. But we haven't been able to pinpoint, you know, where they're going. And, you know, it's funny because here in Nodak versus home, like their blocks are so big. Mm -hmm. Like tonight when I went scouting, it was like, I'm trying to get to this other section, you know, to check it. And it just takes you forever to get over there. And, you know, it's just it's just part of it. And that's the fun part of it Mm -hmm. to me, you know. Mm -hmm. So but, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been an interesting first trip out here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully tomorrow. Really good hunt this morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get into that one for sure. For sure. And hopefully tomorrow we're still kind of up in the air, but we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. So before we get into today's hunt, I want to touch a little bit on scouting. Mm-hmm. Because it is, I could you argue even, that it's the most important no, part of the whole thing? No, for the most part. Right? I mean, if you have no idea where the, you know, where the birds are going, then... Why? Why right. go out? You could go out in any field you wanted to and oh, hopefully some birds come here, but scouting, finding them, gaining permission, you know, setting up, looking at what they've what they've done, looking how they're in the in the field, replicating that, and then hopefully you have a next you know, a su- successful hunt. Mm-hmm. So Well and and I think this is part of for me. Yeah, obviously I preach so much about falling in love with the process as it relates to the dog training, but this is part of a big part of falling in love with the process as far as the hunt goes. Right. You know, when we come out here hunting, we do not expect to hunt every day or every opportunity because we know that there's going to be a lot of time scouting. Yep. I love scouting. Oh, me and too. I know a lot of people don't. 
Yep. I, I, and I get it. Right? You're spending a lot of time in the truck. It's not fun from a you're not in the field pulling a trigger, right? But I would rather scout for two days and hunt one to have that one hunt be a memorable stouter hunt than to hunt all three days and kill a couple birds each time right. just by getting lucky. Yep. And and this is where I think this this is this is the grind part of it, right? Because you're not like tonight, like I feel like you found a couple fields and Travis found a couple fields, but nothing that you guys are like, oh my gosh, right. we are in the money. Yep. Right? Yep. Like huntable fields for sure, holding birds, a few hundred birds. Yep. Right? Yep. But nothing that's like Hey, we've got fifteen hundred in here, and it's going to be nutty tomorrow. Sure, yep. Right? Is that fair? Oh, uh, yeah, one hundred, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's, you know, the one field that is consistently holding a mega, mega load is the one that we can't hunt. Mm-hmm. You know, so I can't remember if you and I talked about that or Kyle and I did, but one of us did. You and I talked about it on the first episode on day one, right? On day one because we Travis had found it, but there was just a lot of gray. So we chose not to hunt it. Mm-hmm. So still, Rob and uh, Travis went tonight to take some photos and some video of that field before they, you know, hit some other spots that Travis knew that were, there were some birds in the area. And, again, I mean, that field has 5K-plus mallards in it. Mm-hmm. There were ducks, you know, pintails, mm-hmm. mallards, gadwalls, widgeons, everything. Mm-hmm. And it's just – you know, we've chosen to leave it alone and mm-hmm. go about finding something else. And so tonight um, you guys went back out to where we hunted today because we saw a lot of ducks, had a very successful morning this morning. Mm-hmm. And so I had went out and Travis had a friend that, a farmer friend that, you know, they had had a bunch of birds in their field and I went to check it out and there was no birds in it. So then it was, you know, racing the sun again and trying to find another field. And I found several fields, but like you said, they were just <laughs> – there's there's pods of birds all over the place. It's just not like, holy cow, that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's the spot. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's just part of the game. And, you know, you're a race against time, and there's a lot of, lot of land to cover out here. You know, this mm-hmm. is very abnormal to me. Because, you know, where I'm at home, our blocks are a lot smaller. Um, you know, you know about where the waterfowl is and how they are, um, you know, where they're going, et cetera, et cetera. Out here, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. And you could drive miles and miles and miles. Like, you know, I drove, I think, 45 minutes tonight mm-hmm. to get to where I was going. Mm-hmm. And and the difference is, though, that you can see. You could see forever, right? Right. So you can feel like you can chase birds, and all of a sudden you're like, "Well, she have been chasing for ten minutes. Where right. are they?" Yes, <laughs> right. Yes, exactly, exactly. So no, it was uh, my night. If you want me to get into that, Let, let's get into this morning first. Okay, but because yeah, you had a night, I had a night. <laughs> so um, okay, so let's talk about today, the field that we were hunting and why. So um. Travis was the one that found this field mm-hmm. yesterday and said there was a bunch of ducks, good number of, of honkers yeah, in there as well, right? And it was on the edge of – it was a stubble field, a wheat field that was on the edge of this big lake. Yep. Which um, you and I are both not big on hunting close to roosts. No. Um but this was a big lake, and so we didn't really know, and we didn't have any other option, right? And so we're like, all right, let's go try it. Right. Um, so we, so And we didn't have any other option because our one goose field that had a bunch of birds in it diminished. Right. Yeah, nothing in there, basically. Right. Right? Yep. Um, okay, so <laughs> this morning we get up. My truck has a flat tire, hmm. and I can see the nail sticking in my tire. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know. So we pump it up. It seems to be a slow leak, so we're like, hey, let's just roll with it and hope that when we get done with this hunt, I'm not sitting on my rims, right? Yep. So we pump it up. Of course, that's a delay, but we do the best we can. We get out there, get set up quick, and it's cold. It Very was 21. Cold. Yeah. 
21 degrees. Yep. Um, so we get out there, we get set up. I feel good about the setup, except that the wind is 100% the wrong way. Yeah, in our face. In our, straight in our face, right? So our spread, again, because we're backed up to this edge of a, a lake. Oh, and by the way, the edge was like a drop off. Oh, yeah. It was a, dang near a cliff, right, like yep. down to this water. And so we didn't have any option of like, hey, we'll just you know flip it around, hunt the other side. It wasn't an option, right? And we were on the X of where they were the night before. So what we did is we just kicked our decoys out much further than what we normally would in hopes that that would give the pocket that they'd come over us, sit down, you know, shoot them from behind kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know, right? So uh, we get everything set up, and it was immediately birds start doing it. Yep. Ducks, mm-hmm. right? And, I mean, we finished – many small groups then we had many big groups come and finish it was just a fun morning very fun very like fun. it was to the point that whitney turned and looked at me and she said this is probably my favorite morning we've ever had duck yep. hunting really fun yep uh i had Clyde and solo both of them did great a lot of fun watching those two work together uh travis had Knox, so we had three dogs in the field and you know, just to touch on that for a second so Three dogs in the field, it's it's a lot. Mm-hmm. There's not many times that I would say to do that, but all three dogs are under control. They're quiet. You'd never know they were even there, right? Like they're a pleasure to be with. Right. Um, and the reason I'm hunting two dogs at a time is because we have a limited number of days. I'm trying to get as much work in for everybody as I can. And so it's it's difficult trying to juggle everybody. So if we pick up 25 birds in the morning, I'd rather have, you know, 10 for Clyde, 10 for Solo, you know, 5 for Knox, whatever it breaks out to sure. be, right? Rather than one of the dogs gets, you know, 20 and then doesn't get to hunt again the whole rest of, of the trip, right? right? There's a lot of great, you know, training on the fly with honoring, with, you know, just that the extra patience that that involves on not getting competitive with another dog, right? There's a lot there. So, um, plus it gets them more time in the field. Mm-hmm. They, both, they did fantastic. I was really, really happy with all the dog work. They did really well. Um, Solo is building off of his first hunt from earlier in the week. Did great. Fantastic. Yeah. What well, What was your comment when we came in? I said, I literally, you were sitting on the couch, I think, watching some footage with Rob. I said, Josh, I said, one thing that really impressed me today was Solo's marking. Mm-hmm. And which I mentioned that the other day was like his marking was just, he was stepping on birds. He didn't even... Boom, right and back, you know. So his marking ability is, has been very impressive. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and I know everybody thinks like, oh, you know, they should be blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there's there's a lot that goes on with terrain and everything that, you know, that these dogs are they're put up against. And But he has literally just every single time. Mm-hmm. There's, yeah. there's no hunt, hunt, hunt. It's like, I know where it's at. There it is. Let's go. I, the sooner I get back, I get to go get another one. Mm-hmm. So – that's that's been the most impressive for me yeah he he does and the other thing that whitney had mentioned today was that how in tune solo was with me from if i called and looked up he'd look up where i was looking right if you know the guns came up and pointed direction boom he's right there right right? like he's very observant yes and he really soaks things in yeah today a couple times i got caught because it was like birds you know you'd be sitting there shooting the shit and all of a sudden, like, oh, hey, 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 get down, get down, get down. So there was a couple of times I got caught, like, you know, in front or by you because I was we were doing B-roll or something for, you know, some retriever roadmap stuff. And But solo, like, looking in the sky, watching for birds, catching the birds, following the birds, you know, all the way either to when they get shot or when they leave. And, you know, he was just into the whole entire hunt. Mm-hmm. So which was for a young dog. I mean, he's caught on very quick. Mm-hmm. So here, here's what my belief. I believe that's because of the red shirting last year. Sure, absolutely. I believe it's because that's what he did. Yep. He he sat there, he observed, he watched, he understood everything, and he wasn't geeking out of his mind thinking that I'm going to be blown out of here and retrieve the second that I can. Mm-hmm. And so he was able to slow down and soak everything in. Yep. I really believe that. Oh, me too. 
I do too. I last year because last year at this time uh, was our second day. We had a super super fun duck shoot. We mm-hmm. we had ducks it was fantastic all morning, and long. he was on that hunt, and he was on that hunt. That's and, right. But he sat there and watched duck after duck, not only landing the decoys and being shot and everything, watching other dogs, and he just he was steady as can be. Never got one retrieve, and you know mm-hmm. here we are back and. I was just crushing it. Yeah, no, that 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 it was really interesting. I hadn't thought about that. I mean, that was the, the day that we had killed our pintails mm-hmm. in the first twenty minutes, and we were finishing groups of forty, fifty pintails Correct. in the decoys. Yep, Correct. that that was a great day to blow his mind and let him just soak it in. Oh yeah, yep. And for what he showed today, and like I said, just just being in tune with the whole entire hunt was it was just fun to watch. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, it it was. Um, so, uh, so loved the dog work today. Yep. That that was yeah that was fantastic. Um, really fun shoot. I think everybody really enjoyed it. I mean, when when you're finishing big groups like that, how can you not enjoy it? Right. Right. So it really was fun. Yep. Um, so we get done with the hunt. We're not limited out, right? And we had um, Marie's son that was coming out here. So we had some you know some new you know new birds or, or limits if you you would to get and what we were going to do is we we're just going to s- keep the decoys and you know the blind and everything we we're just going to keep the same setup that we were going to do mm-hmm. just do it again tonight right and the biggest reason is because i really wanted to get tucker out you know tucker sat through a few hunts now as i've talked about in the past this is the dog that I'm not going to redshirt due to the fact that he's already three. Yep. And I don't want his first season to be at four. Right. And um, I, I honestly, I didn't want to smash. I wanted a few ducks to do what they needed to do to give him an opportunity. And then show me, show me who you are. Right. right? Like I, I can't know without putting you in the game. I know you're a monster training. Mm-hmm. I know you are fantastic looking when you're out here in a controlled setup. So now show me what you can do outside of that. Right. And uh, so we got out there, get settled in, and nothing happening for quite a while. And he was totally calm and under control. Not a peep, not a muscle move, not a anything. But again, he sat through a number of hunts. Mm-hmm. So this was normal ish to him right um and then there's one single mallard that came in boom one shot it was like it was ideal one bird one shot boom right in the decoys steady waited for 10 seconds send him boom right there right back and what was so funny to me is that he was so excited he was just happy like you see in his face and the way he's moving his body and like he was just he was very he was a puppy yep. like he was very very excited yep. um and he so, he wants to please oh god the dog through training and everything just his demeanor he he wants to please 100 percent. yeah and which is fun though i wasn't on there but i you and i had talked a couple times on the phone so super proud you know of all mm-hmm. the work and you know the excitement that was in your voice when when you told me about about this but mm-hmm. sorry didn't mean no it's great i mean that's what it's all about yeah, right i mean that's right these little moments are are so impactful yep. you know this is why we're here yep. um so he only got two two retrieves tonight i think yep two and the other bird uh actually came from behind us kind of skirting the edge of, of the lake so it wasn't ideal but we had been out there for two and a half, three hours, and it kill, killed one bird. We were coming down the last, you know, 10 minutes of the season. And so I spun around, shot it, boom, splash in the water. But, of course, he doesn't see it because he's in his dog blind looking like if I shot him at, you know, if I shot him to the south, he's looking to the north, right? Yep. And, all right, so now you get to run your first blind. But the first blind wasn't out in the stubble field. It was down this cliff-like hill <laughs> through the brushy trees then gets down to the bank and then into the water. So he took a great initial line. I was a little nervous sending him through those trees because he likes to go 100 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. But he handled it great, 
took the line. I kind of tried to send him through a shot that, you know, there wasn't going to be a bunch of trees. So I, you know, sent him through there, stopped, got it to the edge of of the uh, of the water, gave him a back cast to get him into the water, and he kind of spun a goofy way, and I don't believe he could see me through those trees. So I sat him again, and I kind of moved into an opening that I could tell. And then now, now he's zoned in. I know he's got me, right? So I give him a back cast, poof, back into the water. And then about 10 feet in the water, then he sees it. Yep. And then he's, you know, and it was, it was beautiful. Yep. Back, great delivery to hand, excited, happy, 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 right? So um, this was a great start. He's not going to get to hunt again, assuming that today or tomorrow is probably our last day hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, so he probably won't hunt again for two weeks, and then we'll get back out here, and he will be one of my priorities when I get back out here yep. end of the end of the month. But you have to be super proud of what. Super, super f- proud. From the other night when he went to watch mm-hmm. to now his first hunt, because you didn't take any other dog. Right. right? It was just it him. Was just oh, this was a him hunt right. for sure. Yeah, so – Super proud. Yeah, I, and and you do you you pour your heart and soul into these dogs, and for him, there was always this like extra level of of uh, anxiety is the wrong word, but anxiousness at least to a point because I got this dog later, you know, older mm-hmm. than I normally ever do. Now I have to try to squeeze all of his training in, like go 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 go, because we have limited time. At least I feel like we do, right? Right? Like I did not want his first season to be at four, right? So I knew if I, if I couldn't get through the training, we wouldn't be able to anyway. Like then it's completely off the table. And then even if I do, I do truly believe the red shirting is a big deal. But I can't. Like I just I could not red shirt him for a whole year. This is different than a solo situation at one, like. You've got a lot of years ahead of you, man. Like you, you need to sit this one out for the exact reason we saw this week. Right. He's been a, a stud this week, mm-hmm. and I believe last year was a big part of that. But for Tucker's, it's just it's a different situation. Right. And so, still do the red train. Still sat through you know some early season hunts in Wisconsin. Yeah, out here in North Dakota, he he sat through one hunt, I think. Um, so he's been through the hunts. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe half dozen. Yeah, or so, like, and I did feel he was ready. Right. And he showed he was ready. He was fantastic. He really did did well. So he's going to be a priority of mine as we go, as we kind of come through, through you know, that, that, uh, that second half. So yeah. yeah. Tell me a little bit about, I guess, the emotions, because I think people do know that Tucker is Brock's nephew. So mm-hmm. Brock, he's sister. Not a Brock's sister. Yeah, yeah. litter mate sister mm-hmm. is one of, Tucker is one of her pups. Mm-hmm. So... Tell me just the emotion because of Brock and everything that Brock's done and who Brock is to have, you know, his nephew, so to speak, you know, now part of your team. Yeah, no, I I think it's a great question because I tell people all the time that if you try to replicate your first dog, you're going to be disappointed, right? So a lot of times people come and get puppies and it's like – uh. Hey, I had a Clyde puppy in the past. I want another one because I love him so much. It's like, ugh, like this this puppy is not going to be your other puppy, even though he is from the same, you know, right. the same dad, right? Um, so there's some of that, but the biggest reason that that I even bought Tucker, Tucker in the first place is that I had multiple multiple of my friends overseas that are like, hey, like this is Brock. Mm-hmm. He's a young Brock. And Brock is seven, so I'm like, like, I just, you know, Brock and I have a very special relationship, and he is a very special caliber dog, and so I'd be lying if I was if I wasn't saying that I was hoping lightning you know, would strike in this bottle twice. But what was so fun about the summer? Why I truly believe we got through what we got through because there was a lot of hurdles on my end you know, with battling Lyme's disease and just. You know, the six, seven weeks that I was essentially out of commission because I was struggling with that so much. Um, You know, then you get into show season, then you're going into hunting season. Like, he didn't have, especially the back half of the train season, like I wanted him to. 
But the reason he got through it so quickly, I believe, is because that dog was like I was training Brock all over again. Mm. The way he moves, the way he acts, the way he responds, the way he, he you know just holds it. Like, I feel like I can almost tell what he's thinking before he thinks it because I've been through it so many times already with Brock. And so um, so I think that was a big part of, of why he got through it the way he did. And then to take all that and put it in, in the field, like this is, is a little undescribable, you know, for me, just because it's different than taking a puppy vet from eight weeks old and you, know, you put him in the field for the first time and, you know, like it's just different, right? I had very high expectations. I had pushed him very hard. When I say hard, like I'm not hard physically on him, but we essentially tried to fit two years of training into one summer. Like that was, it was very strategic, go, 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 and he handled it so well. Um, I, w- I was very, very, you know, excited. And I think I'm even more excited of what's to come because the dude has a ton of potential. Uh, mm-hmm. Really does. Fun and to I, watch. Yeah, he, he is. He just, he's that dog that some dogs are very impressive, but they're not fun to watch. Right. Like he is very impressive and very fun to watch, yep. and so we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm not saying that he's the next Brock, you know, because he's got a long ways to go to prove that, right. you know. But as far as as it being really fun and exciting to work in with him, absolutely. Like dogs like that, that is why I do what I do, mm-hmm. is because of dogs like him. Yep. yep. So. Yeah, he's he's a cool dog. He's you know I met him earlier in the summer when you just had got him, so. You know, and then obviously I wasn't up there to watch all the progressions and everything, but the times I would come up, you know, you were still contemplating if, you know, he's going to make the team or not. Mm-hmm. And Still am, to be honest. Right. Yeah, still am. I, I love him, but for sure. he has to prove it. For sure. And I think the last time I came up here, he was like, man, I think he's going to make it. And mm-hmm. I think the last couple of days, you know, I wasn't on that hunt tonight, but the other night, you know, I think there's a – I think that he's 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 doing really good. Mm, he's, so. he, yeah, he's definitely moving in that right direction. Yep. For sure. Yep. For sure. So, so uh, while we were celebrating uh, – while we were celebrating our, our uh, Tucker victories out in the field, uh, tell us about your night. Eh, I had quite the night. So, obviously, I don't have a vehicle up here, and I was put on the scouting mission – which one of the reasons why I went scouting is usually, you know, I would go out in the field. And actually, I thought I was going to go out in the field and capture some of this more of Tucker, Tucker stuff, you know, with, via camera. And definitely wanted you to. Right. For sure. But, you know, we have just have on this trip, we have just have some un- inexperienced people. So we needed somebody to go out and scout. And that's the duty that I was that I was given. So actually, I had like all my camera stuff. It was out in the garage. I sat it on a cooler, you know, like ready to go. I was putting on my stuff, and you walked in. And you're like, uh, I thought you were scouting, and I'm like, I thought I was going hunting to capture <laughs> no. this. And you're like, Oh, you didn't hear that other, com- you know, the conversation. And I was doing some work in between, so I wasn't paying attention to everything that was going on. So anyhow, well, and and I originally want, like I said before, right. I I really do enjoy scouting. I wanted to scout. Yep. But I also understood that this was probably my only opportunity to get Tucker you on a hunt. You needed to get Tucker. So on. that yeah, so that was that was the reason for the flip flop. Right. And I was really excited because I was hoping you'd finally get to pull the trigger for an <laughs> afternoon here. So it, it was a uh, it was a win overall for tonight. But I wish that you right. could have made it all right. happen. Right. So I don't have a vehicle. So I'm I ask you. I was like, whose truck should I take? And Joe happened to say Joe from RPM Training Products. Uh, says he can take mine. So perfect. So grab a pair of binoculars, jump in the truck. First place I'm going to go check was a roost that, you know, we knew that where birds were on. I wanted to go check to see what was on there, et cetera, et cetera. And it's literally five minutes from the house, maybe 10 minutes from the house. And going down the road, and all of a sudden I'm like, what the heck is, what's the sound? Something, you know, something didn't sound right with the truck. And initially, I thought it was Joe's exhaust system because when it started up, it was pretty pretty gruffy, and he said that he had some issues with it. And so I thought, well, maybe you know, I with my luck that the you know that the exhaust just you know it's dragging on the ground or something. So I pull off to this little prairie road, jump out, 
and sidewall of one of the tires completely blown out. <laughs> completely blown out. So now not only am I in a field or a little gravel, you know, not even a gravel lane, a grass lane, you know, with a f- complete flat tire and, you know, by myself, which is no big deal, but and Joe's truck. Thankfully, you know, I wasn't going super fast when this all happened, but, um, you know, I called you and I called Travis. I was like, hey, I'm going to have a little delay on this scouting trip <laughs> because, you know, now I got to change this tire. So um, I get everything out get the tire changed, um, get everything good to go, jump back in the truck, and I called. The The spare tire is not in the best shape. Slow on air. Um, it's got some, you know, it's never been used in a, I think it's a 17, I think is what I saw. Uh, Joe's truck is a 17, so the tire had, you know, a couple indents in it, and I just wasn't comfortable, obviously, you know, driving a far distance with us, and I had to go, like, a half hour 45 minutes south of of where we're at and uh so i called travis and say ask rob snell from gundog supply if i can if i could borrow his bronco to you know go down on you know take this trip he's like yeah sure so i make the trek back get the tire all changed make the trek back to the house come inside grab the key get back in take off at almost the exact same spot where I blew the tire, I almost hit a deer. I literally had to stop in the road for the deer to cross. And thankfully I saw them and or we may be eating venison tonight for dinner. <laughs> but so that's that's how my, my scouting I haven't even found any birds yet. And that's how my scouting trip started. So anyhow I made uh made my way down and Travis had had been in contact with a farmer who had some birds on his field, wanted me to go check this field and get down there no birds in the field and a little bit before i got to that actual field i found some geese i saw a couple flocks going into this field so you know just like anything i wanted to go check the field um that i was sent to first no birds in the field so i'm gonna my in my mind i'm gonna go make a big circle around the block and check where i would saw these geese go in well then i have this little hen pheasant that goes running into the ditch and then I at first I thought I hit her but she you know she flew across the road so now I'm in somebody's second person's vehicle not mine that I almost I have a bad flat tire I almost hit a deer now I almost hit you know pheasant which not it's not going to do any damage but it's still just like what the heck is going on you might be surprised right you never know so but uh I ended up finding uh was four fields that had some birds in it and the one field that we may be going to tomorrow looked very promising but it was way off from where I was at it was kind of like in the middle of a section and you know I saw a lot of ducks working it saw some uh, some geese some snow geese that were you know in the field some Canada's and I needed to make my way on the other side to see if I could get a better look and did that make sure you know everything's good to go and there wasn't quite as many birds in there initially than what i thought there was um but you know it's still a pretty decent decent field that i mm-hmm. i think we will you know that we should probably go hunt tomorrow but uh so anyhow um i found another field that had some ducks but it was just like every field that i found like we talked a little earlier was just there wasn't like a lot a lot of numbers you know, like Travis, obviously the field that they found, every duck in this area is going to that field that's got the corn that's mm-hmm. in it, right? And that you can't hunt. And so where, where he was at, he just didn't have a lot of luck finding ducks because most of the ducks are going where the corn's at. Where, where I was at, you know, a lot of crops were starting to come off, a lot of corn was starting to come off, and the ducks were just kind of – ducks and geese were just kind of spread out. They weren't congregated in one area. So – you know, we found, you know, you'd find a couple hundred here, a couple under there, you know, a hundred here, 50 there, 60 there. It wasn't like a thousand birds in one field. So a lot of birds around in the area, but they were just kind of all spread out. So, but, uh, yeah, I made my way back and everything was, everything was good. I'm inside, you know, talking to Travis and Rob had beat me back 
and uh, was telling Rob that how much I liked his little Bronco the first time I ever driven the new Bronco mm -hmm. and nice little you know little vehicle and lots of pickup and uh, Kyle comes in when you guys I seen you guys pull in Kyle comes in he's like um, just to let you know the your camera fell off the cooler onto the floor I'm just like what first of all it's partially my fault. You know, I had I had it all set out, was thinking we were going out, so I brought it all outside, get, getting dressed, getting ready to go. And then when I just knew I was going scouting, I just went in scout mode and left the camera sit on the cooler. You know, I, not to me, didn't think it was a big deal. And obviously it was a, it was a little bit bigger deal, but one of the dogs had come in after being let out and caught it with his tail, knocked it off the cooler, Thankfully, everything – I can't even find a scratch on it. You know, I can't find I, – I've got a cage around it. Um, I'm thinking that maybe it just hit that cage and hit, you know, the top carry handle and didn't uh, – you know, I don't see any damage. The, even the lens, the hood for the lens didn't have any scratches or anything that indicated because it fell mm -hmm. to concrete. Now it was only, you know, a foot and a half, but – you never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. And especially when you have a $5,000, $6,000 rig, you're just like, which, you know, I know some guys that are running more expensive cameras, but still, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, I checked that all out. It was all good. So that was my, that was my night, you know, yeah. flat tire, almost smoked a deer, almost hit a pheasant. I had a little, I, I mean, I, I would consider it I had a decent night of scouting. Mm. And then... Obviously, come home and the camera gets knocked <laughs> off, and it's just like, what else? So, Travis poured me a drink, and <laughs> here I am. <laughs> so, um, so the the field that you found, it sounds like is probably our better option. It sounds like we have two options, mm -hmm. right? Now, the only thing that that makes us nervous about the field you found yeah. is that. Oh, I forgot about that part. Yeah, yeah. So I go. So I had another field with honkers in it. And I wanted to – I had enough time. I wanted to run back because I hadn't looked at it yet because of the block size. And when I was making my way back to look at this field to begin with, because they weren't in the f a field I was initially sent to, I had found them in a different field. So I was kind of going around the block to make my way back to see what, you know, what was in there is when I found the other, other group. So – and then – but like I said, they were east of – where I was at yet, so I had to go down and go farther east, you know, to come back to get a better look at the field. So now I had to go back west to check, you know, the field that initially had the honkers in it. And I was like, well, I got enough time. I'll go check that, and I'll come back, and I'll watch it until the birds get out. Just to at least give me an idea for sure how many – because they were, you know, where, I, where they were at, there was a big hill, so I couldn't really see them from the east side. I could see him from the west side, but it was, you know, a half mile, three quarters of a mile to where they were actually at, you know, to to watch them. So my thought was to go back and I was going to sit there and watch them leave. And when I get back there, no birds. I'm like, well, where the heck did they go? And I see this movement in the field. I'm like, what is that? So I pull up my glasses and it's a coyote. <laughs> the coyotes jumped all the birds out of the field. So, we have that. So, mm -hmm. I know Travis had found a decent goose field, had a few ducks in it. You know, this was a, a decent – this was a better field for both ducks and geese. Um, the other field that I that I found uh, that we could go, you know, had several hundred geese in it. So, you know, we have options. But mm -hmm. it was just – it was one of them nights. Mm -hmm. It was just like it, – it's just part of it, mm -hmm. you know. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to kind of game plan here tonight. Uh, we still haven't eaten anything no. all day, basically. <laughs> and it's like. Yeah, what time? It, it it's is. Got, it's it's got to be 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Uh, yeah, it's 10 o'clock. Yeah. So um, we should go get something to eat. We should game plan for tomorrow. Um, I think a lot of this is going to be you and Travis comparing notes and right. figuring where we are. And then let's think about hide. Let's think about when. Let's think about everything and see what our best option is. But, um I'm excited for tomorrow just because our mornings have been the best, uh, which we have had years out here that afternoons are the, the best, best. Yep. but mornings have, have definitely been the best. 
And uh, and I think tomorrow, the only dog that really hasn't got to hunt this trip has been Brock. Yeah. And so I think we're just going to go just solo with or not so not <laughs> solo solo. <laughs> not the uh, dog. We're solo. only going with Brock. Right. And uh, just you know, give him some time and give him now. He was kind of my last priority on this hunt because he's already been to Texas for teal. He's been in Kansas for doves. You know, but he's been here, and he's the only one that really hasn't got to, you know, to get on a, a decent hunt. So, yep. um, so I think we'll roll with Brock tomorrow. He's always fun to hunt with. Yeah. 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 And then, too, for me, I can kind of just take a breath and pull the trigger, too, which right. would be really nice. Which, so. one last note before we end this, the field that we're hunting tomorrow was a field last year that he had that 800-plus yard blind blind yeah so pretty, which, which pretty we think is, which we think is his second longest blind he's right ever, ever yeah. right. which is just pretty coincidental it really is so. yeah because it, it wasn't on purpose it was just that's where you found the birds right yeah and i didn't even know when i was there looking at the one side and when i got to the other end travis was like hey look across the street that such and such is field and i'm like it's like that's where we're at last year i'm like oh then all the landscape came together you know because that's the first time only time i was out there and so, yeah, I think it'll be a special day. Yeah, no, it should be fun. So, uh, so, no deck, day three. Day three. That's a wrap. That's right. Yeah. We need to eat. We need to get some sleep. Need sleep. Because we're definitely getting to that point that we're dragging a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> my my <laughs> eyes are feel like sandpaper. Me so. too. <laughs> Me too. So, um, so we will uh, we'll come at you guys maybe tomorrow. It kind of depends if we can do a podcast while we're driving. Yeah. I don't know if we can or not. That would be, it'd be interesting. It would be interesting. Yeah. Um, if not, it will probably be a, you know, a couple of days before we kind of get, get wrapped up here just because we'll be traveling. We're going to hunt, basically unpack, organize the trailer, get cleaned up, get on the road yep. and so we can get home at a decent decent time unless something really changes our mind to where we have to stay. So, yep. um but we have enough between Joni didn't get new tires, <laughs> and I mean, there's there's a lot going a lot on. So, going on. Um, anyway, thank you guys for spending uh, the time with us, and uh, hopefully, you guys are enjoying this. Please give us some feedback. I'd love to hear some feedback on if you guys are enjoying these in the moment things, or if you're like, ah, just kind of get back to you know, to the training part of it. Um, but let us know because it is not convenient to do these, but. We think it's kind of fun, and oh. hopefully we can give you guys some like, like on-the-fly kind of updates on stuff. So if you're enjoying it, please let us know so that we know and we can know. Do we? We know. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> w- then we know, do we take the time to do these on trips or not? Yeah, yep. It would be good, good feedback for us. So thank you guys for spending the time, and uh, we'll talk with you maybe tomorrow or at least in the next couple of days. Catch you guys later. So thanks, y'all. Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Leave us a review on iTunes. And a special thank you to Yukonuba because without them, we couldn't do what we do here, bringing this information to you.